and so uh, I don't have I don't have privy to your information, and more importantly, uh, I'm not sure I'd want to follow up that social media uh, angle. I, I we just disagree. I think it's a philosophical disagreement. Factually, that's another issue that. Uh, if the facts aren't going to rule, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, With all due respect, Mr. Chairman, just ask Speaker Pelosi one question. Why will she not share her communications from January 5th and 6th with the committee? I'll ask that, that question if you will ask some of your colleagues uh, to waiver their privilege and turn over phone records and other communications uh, dealing with uh, January 6th sitting colleagues in this uh, building. If, if you would do that and go specifically and they respond positively, I, I think it's a fair question and I'll get an answer. But we have to do both. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman. Sir, you're recognized for five Thank Mr. Chairman. I'd like to also add support in the effort uh, to proceed with HRES 1378. This is not a unique situation, and there's some parallels that exist in a project of my home state of Idaho. There's a critical source for copper that this resolution addresses for a critical need. In my home state of Idaho, we submitted a plan under a, a project called Midas Gold 2016. Significant resources of gold, silver, tungsten, and antimony. You may recall antimony is on the critical mineral list. Necessary for munitions, batteries, solar panels. The things that we need to try to achieve some of the, the, uh, the green energy initiatives. Got to have antimony. 90% of the current supply for that comes from Russia, China, and Tajikistan. Right now, with the hurdles in front, maybe, maybe 2027, maybe. So the struggle with that H1378 is attempting to address is not strictly unique. It's been said in so many ways what the need is and what the current solutions are and they just simply don't line up. You know what, God gave us the resources we need and also the mind to manage it wisely. We're failing on the latter part. As has been stated, the only thing that H res 1378 does is simply request information transparency there is no downside to that or is there maybe if you have the wrong agenda there's no downside if the agenda is legitimate objective and we're trying to do the right thing for the american people mr chairman i urge passage and consideration for HRS 1378. Yield back my time. Sure. Thanks, gentlemen. The gentleman yields. Anyone else? Ah, Mr. Gomer, you, uh, you, you're recognized, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I appreciate that. And actually, I agree with uh, the chairman that uh, we've been going downhill since January 6th. Uh, we've had federal judges who have ignored the Constitution. We've had Department of Justice that has taken on Gestapo tactics, and I don't say that lightly. I say it as after having studied Gestapo tactics, they are now in America. It's gotten so bad that as corrupt as China and Russia's justice systems are, they are now able to point to the United States with impunity uh, about all of the uh, political prisoners. We got federal judges 
that have gone 180 days without uh, ruling on you know a habeas corpus when you know most people consider 180 days to be a reasonable time to get to trial on a criminal case uh, the abuses have just been extraordinary and so i agree with the chairman the united states has gone down in the eyes of the world ever since january 6 as they've seen the gestapo tactics the uh, abuses of civil rights in prison uh, they can point to those and say well I mean, we've gotten rid of our gulags, but now America has one right in the District of Columbia. So, but moving on to uh, 1378, I have such great respect for my Republican colleagues, but they've been really negative about uh, the policies of this administration and the damage that's been done to our economy, especially to the poor, the working for the people that are struggling to pay their energy bills. So I would like to look for the silver lining, and there is one. Uh, because we are not, because the cancellation of this project and the failure, the refusal to, as we just stated, use the gifts that God has gave us, we have been blessed with more natural resources of all kinds than any nation in the world, even though there are those that are bigger geographically than we are. Um, but on the bright side, uh, you know, this it's been going on for a while, but with the value of copper, that construction sites would put out the copper plumbing and have that ready for pouring concrete on the following days. Uh, the construction industry has had to increase their number of employees. So that's a great thing. Uh, but they're mainly for security guards to stay 24 seven at construction sites, even after concrete is poured because of the Democrats policy, the value has continued to get higher and higher. And so they're not going to the banks, they're going to construction sites. They're going to buildings that are already on the way up, not just uh, waiting for foundations. They're ripping copper out wherever they can get it, copper wiring, copper pipes. Uh, so they have created a, a bigger industry than ever in the theft of copper and uh, the resale market of copper uh, through the black market. So there are jobs being created by the Democrats' policy. And also, I don't think we should uh, belittle the fact that there are thousands and thousands of jobs being created in the energy sector to produce power. Unfortunately, they're in China, uh, as China is adding hundreds of coal-fired power plants all over the country and expects to continue adding those in the next two years. Now, in East Texas, we've got still got a couple of coal powered plants left. They meet the requirements of the federal law. They have scrubbers on them to take out particulate before it gets into the air. So that in Texas, uh, for years now, our uh, air quality has continued to get better and better. Uh, unfortunately, we've had coal plants that have already been shut down. And to use the term of one of my uh, Republican colleagues, go, as we've gone to more intermittent power sources, solar and wind. Unfortunately, during some of our biggest storms, the- uh, Mr. Goldman, if uh, you could wrap up, low, if uh, oh, okay. you please. So anyway, thanks to the administration for the thousands and thousands of jobs they've created in China. Hopefully someday we can get some of okay. those back in the U.S. Gentleman yields back. back. Uh, for, you know, and my colleagues on, on this side of the aisle, gentlemen, uh, you know, we're pretty tough skinned. Uh, but I don't know, this last accusation is maybe a little bit over the top. Uh, 
called a lot of things, but never a copper thief, you know, and I don't know, that's probably the low of the lows there. Uh, Sir, I never called you a copper thief at all. The gentleman yields. Uh, Mr. Rosenell, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, um, here we are on the Natural Resource Committee, and we are spending time talking about uh, an event that uh, another committee is dealing with on January 6th, and we're talking about domestic cats, and yet the things that are causing problems across our country for our constituents, the high cost of energy, the high cost of groceries, uh, that we actually can do something about in this committee and we're doing nothing about them. And it's very disappointing to me. And I was hoping that maybe in these final two months that we could actually address those. And one of the things that we are charged with here in Congress, as you said earlier, you're not privy to that information. And, and none of us, unfortunately, are privy to the information that we're trying to get on the resolution compromise. And that is all that this body and this resolution, 1378, that Representative Gosar has submitted is trying to accomplish. It's not trying to pass any legislation. It's not trying to delay any legislation. It's trying to help this body to simply look at information so that we can see what is going on that is keeping this project from moving forward. You know, we, we, if we didn't learn anything during the pandemic, what we should have learned, all of us, is that we cannot be dependent upon foreign governments, foreign adversaries to produce products for us, whether that's our medical supplies, our energy supplies, or anything else. And, and we find ourselves in that very spot because of the inability for us to produce domestically the things that we need. And unfortunately, those decisions are being made right in this committee. If we look at why we are right now in an investment of $70 billion, $70 billion that had been sent to Ukraine that we have not even received an accounting of to know where the money was spent, the reason that that has taken place and transpired is because of all of the decisions that were made by the Biden administration leading up to the invasion of Russia into Ukraine. On the very first day that he took office, an executive order to rescind the permit of the Keystone XL pipeline that would have brought 850,000 barrels a day of crude oil from our, one of our greatest allies, Canada, of which 150,000 barrels a day would have been Montana and North Dakota crude oil. That one decision not only eliminated all that energy from our country, but it eliminated 60 to $80 million a year from the tax revenue of, of Montana, going through some of the poorest counties in the state, in the state which would have funded schools, it would have funded hospitals, it would have funded roadways, went out the window. And that was a sign of weakness that people around the world and our adversaries noticed, they took notice of. And then the sanctions were lifted from Nord Stream 2 to empower Russia, to sell their energy, to fuel, to fund their military machine. That was another big mistake. We saw the just failed, failed withdrawal from Afghanistan, another big mistake. When you continue to show signs of weakness, it empowers our adversaries. It does not go unnoticed. And that is why we are dealing with that problem right now. And all this committee is asking is to start turning back and making decisions that show that we strengthen our own national security, that we recognize we are going to take control of these things. And instead of empowering these people across the globe, we want to keep it right here domestically. And all this resolution does is say, give us the information, shine a light on the transactions and the communications that were taking place. With that, I will absolutely support this resolution, and I hope that my colleagues will do the same. I yield back.
Gentleman yields. Anyone else? Sir, recognized. Thank you, Chair. And I just wanted to add, and I won't belabor a lot of things. I just want to add one really important point. I, I think we're at a very important point of our country right now with an opportunity to, to look forward and, and I believe accomplish what the majority of us want to accomplish. We want to be able to embrace more renewable technology and doing so is going to require more American trust and trust in the American resources and trust in American industry. I, I support this, this resolution of inquiry. Um, I believe it will bring much needed transparency to the Biden administration's misguided um, decision to shut down the resolution copper project. Um, the Keystone Pipeline was mentioned. You've got the Duluth in, in Minnesota. Um, this, is, this is something that I've, that, that, that's There's been a huge eye-opener for me as I've served in this role. I was not in the mining industry in, in any way, shape, or form prior to, to my time in Congress. And, and as I was going out to, to, to meet folks in my district, um, like every single meeting that I had, the first people they put me in touch with was their environmental team. Every single time I went out. Um, to any, and it particularly is in the eastern part of my state. And I was really coming into this bold and confident about how much effort they were putting into making sure that they weren't only just adhering to standards, but they were exceeding them. So they stayed on top of this issue. And, and I just have a, 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 a perspective on how important it is for us as lawmakers to trust them and to hold them accountable, but to continue to trust them, but to just arbitrarily use an executive order to just sort of cancel all this kind of stuff. Some of the data I have here, that between 2020 and 2021, our nation's copper reliance on foreign sources increased from 37 to 45%. That's 8% that we have to put too much trust into China. And I wanna put that back into America. That's the, that, that, that is the message, that is what I'm fighting for. Um, the bill that I have on, uh, energy production, transparency. It doesn't say we need, we need to cut, we need to change anything with our environmental reviews. It actually says once the environmental reviews are done, we just need transparency to know what is going on with the permitting and leasing uh, um, regulation that, 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 that exists. Um, and, 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 I, and, and, and I'm gonna continue to, to, to work towards that. Uh, we've got our power company in Utah. I just had him come out and speak to a bipartisan group of people on the work that they're doing to build and continue to, to, to increase their portfolio with renewables. And they're at a point where with the NEPA that exists right now and the NEPA regulations, they're not able to even to, 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 to truly take advantage of all of the additional um, renewable capabilities that we do have. This is something we've got to fix. The land exchange um, required for this project, the Resolution Copper Project was it's given a green light by Congress and the previous administration as a critically important step in enhancing our nation's mineral supply. And if we are interested, truly interested in pursuing green energy goals for any kinds, then we, we have to have copper. It's a key ingredient um, for solar, thermal, wind, everything. And, and, and we're, uh, we, need to, we, we need to build that and trust ourselves before, before allowing any of that to be ceded to, to, our, for, to our adversaries. Um, instead of reporting this resolution unfavorably, I urge my colleagues to support HRES 1378, and I yield back. Thank you, Chair. Gentlemen, yields, anyone else? So, recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll be, I'll be brief, but I do wanna echo what my colleague from Utah just said, and I think part of the dialogue we're not really having, we're talking about green energy and those types of things, but in New Mexico, we have two national labs and a very large Department of Defense footprint. And after visiting and touring them, I think one of the elements we're also not discussing enough is the national defense piece on this. Um, and this is so vital in terms of development and manufacturing for uh, critical defense infrastructure and weaponry. And I, I love what my colleague said. We have to figure out a way as Americans to trust one another, trust that we can, we can, we can, uh, be mining these natural resources or we can be uh, utilizing these natural resources in ways that will uh, amplify whether it's Department of Defense or the green energy platform, whatever it is. But I think we can all agree that we do want a safe environment. We do want clean air. We do want to do what's right for our, for our country. But I think that we sometimes move away from the one thing I think we can all agree on. We want to live in a nation that is very safe and I think being uh, reliant on adversarial nations for some of these elements and these natural resources we have here 
is putting ourselves in a more compromising position. So I agree, I hope that we will uh, get this resolution passed. I think we do deserve to have for the American people the uh, information that will help us make a good decision, but we can't discount the, the importance of the Department of Defense piece. And I can assure you, we are way behind the eight ball when it comes to national defense and weaponry and infrastructure uh, when it comes to our military operations. And so we at least owe the conversation to go a little bit that direction so that we can stand strong with our American uh, soldiers, our service members, and our, um, our entire platform in terms of national safety. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, and with that, I yield back. Gentlelady yields, anyone else? Sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. It's, it's always interesting to me to, to hear these discussions and, and to note uh, the, the, the arguments that, um, that are so obvious. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat a bunch that we've already heard, but uh, why? Because I think it's so important to the future of our country. The net zero goals for carbon will double the demand for copper by 2035. That's a mere 12 years from now. I repeat it, the net zero goals will double the demand for copper. Uh, electric vehicles use twice as much copper as a gas-powered car. There's 400 pounds of copper in a new home. Uh, if the world's going to be electrified, it's going to take twice as much copper as we're currently producing. The current downturn in the copper price is causing an underinvestment in the production of copper worldwide. There just was a, 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 a huge plant in Peru canceled by virtue of the low price current of copper, which means in three to four years, the price will be even higher unless we think ahead and actually do something. Uh, we hear again and again and again how that which we do in the United States is, is uh, affecting the world when it comes to carbon creation, but we don't say a word about the damage that's being done to the environment in China as they uh, extract more and more uh, earth that has a lower and lower productive capacity for copper. And what that means is that the, that the environment, in that country at least, and others, is being sacrificed up for our desire to have this uh, or achieve this net zero goal. It's astounding to me that many people would say if we had actually developed copper here in the United States, we would export it. That's hardly the point. The point is that we would have copper here in the United States. It's great that we can export it and make money from it, but it's even greater that we actually have that absolutely essential resource available within the United States and we don't have to worry about importing it from other countries and, and see the, the really sad picture again of our president going to another country and begging for, in the previous case, oil, or the current case, oil, but in the future, copper. Of course, I support the uh, issue before us today, and uh, I yield back. Anyone else wish to be recognized? Mr. Chairman? Sir? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, uh, I came to, to listen um, to the, um, the various reasons why we should entertain this resolution. And um, quite frankly, I'm, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. You know, I'm not necessarily opposed to it. I just, I just reflect on my time here in the Congress and I reflect back to my time in the 116th when um, my colleagues were trying to move similar resolutions uh, under a Republican president to, uh, to get information from a Republican administration. And uh, those efforts were receiving uh, an entirely different um, uh, argument from the other side of the aisle. Uh, so many um, back and forths over whether or not uh, information should be um, pursued uh, from a Republican administration. And, um, and the arguments were being made on this side of the aisle. You know, we need the transparency. We need to be able to look at what's going on. We need to be able to make the decisions uh, based on, on what we're able to uncover. Uh, and the resistance was um, was uh, basically of an opposite tenor from what we're hearing hearing today, and and then I and then I listened more more distinctly to some comments about about the decline of America, and um, and those comments were kind of focused on how the decline of America is um, is occurring as a result of us losing our preeminence in certain areas, but I I really think that the, the decline of America 
is, is actually that kind of partisanship, you know, where one minute, depending on which administration's in power, we're going to oppose um, releasing information, and the next minute, depending on which administration's in power, we're going to encourage the releasing of information. I think that kind of partisanship, the partisanship that tries to make January 6th um, something else, or the kind of partisanship that, that makes us not supporting Ukraine something that we should all of a sudden start entertaining, we should support Ukraine. And we should consider January 6th to be an absolute travesty. That shouldn't be a partisan argument any more than seeking information shouldn't be a partisan argument. I feel like the information we were seeking in the 116th should have been as equally supported as the information that's being sought today. I am inclined to support this resolution, but I would do so in the appeal that we learn to cool the partisanship. We learn to cool the partisanship. And if it requires us to learn to bend, and if, and if I need to vote to support this resolution as, as, a, as, a, as a move towards that kind of bending, then I think that that's what we all need to, to reflect on. Because it's that kind of partisanship that's really going to bring down this country. So I would like to appeal to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle that if there are those of us who are going to be open to supporting this, let's be consistent about it. Let's be consistent about it when this side of the aisle is also going to be seeking information regardless of which administration is in power. And let's be mindful of the fact that there are certain things that we, we do need to have information on and we do need to be supportive of, uh, whether it's the need for us to really engage in responsible mining to support our um, clean energy initiatives, or the need for us to be um, very upfront about how devastating January 6th really was and how important it is for, for us to actually go out there and support Ukraine. You know, let's, let's, let's start doing those kind of things. I think that's what the American people want us to do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back. Chairman Yields, anyone else? <coughs> Mr. Westerman, anyone else? I don't think we have anyone. Yeah. And, uh, and I appreciate all the comments. And, and, and I uh, recognize myself. Um, you know, I, I oppose uh, this resolution of inquiry. And I do so, um, and I have all the list of things that I, I would read to you about. But we, we've been through this in two hearings. I've made these statements time and time again. And we've had the back and forth on the legislation time and time again. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to go into that part of it. I just want, I just think that, uh, that one area is 